Good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Sunday School 2.0, where it is 2023, and it's time to level up our Bible game in the Word. Yeah, I'm excited for another Sunday. Listen, how many did you all guess this morning? I saw some of the numbers coming in uh, on as far as people viewing, so let's see who we got. How many questions did we get? They're all talking about the New Testament. A lot of them is talking about Jesus, so some of them should have been kind of familiar. But let's see who we got, who's in class today. Amen. So happy to see our good friend, uh, Bishop Michael Green, all the way from Rancho, Cucam Mon Rancho Cucamancho, California. Amen. Joining us. And Pastor Green, I will be getting in touch with you later on today, sir, because I do have a special invitation I'd like to extend to you, sir. So I definitely want to uh, talk to you today when you're done with your service. Amen. And as always, we have our lovely first lady, Lady G, with us on. If you're out, if you're out there on whatever social media platform you are, go ahead and put your name in. Go ahead and put your comment in. We want to know who came to class on today. Amen. All right. God bless you, Erica from St. Louis. I, these are our e-members, our GWC e-members from around the country that are with us. And God bless our wonderful goddaughter, amen, evangelist Elena Motley, amen, with us on this morning. Always a blessing. She keeps us so encouraged. So we're going to go ahead and get started because we got another great lesson and we've got another great guest panelist with us on today. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him in with me. And if you all would help me welcome our good friend, some of you all may be familiar with him. Uh, from our uh, former church, amen. He was a member of the Reeves Temple Church for many, 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 many years, and we all kind of grew up together. We saw this young man uh, grow up in the church, amen, in the choir and in different aspects of the uh, church, and now the Lord has sent him to uh, LaGrange, Alabama. Do I have the right, Minister Curtis? Is LaGrange, Alabama or LaGrange, Georgia? <laughs> It's actually LaGrange, Georgia, but you kind of close. It's like oh, borderline. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So send him there to the Open Door Church where he uh, is a minister there and he's preaching and teaching. And his pastor and first lady are using him mightily. And I've got a chance to hear a couple of things he said. And they have been so gracious over the last six months, I think it's been now, where they have had me come in on their Monday church prayer call and facilitate their prayer call. So we want to certainly appreciate your past and first lady for allowing us to do that uh, those times. And we're always here to help your ministry out. And we thank them for allowing you to be with us all today. So Curtis, anything that you want to say to our online class today before we get started? Well, good morning, everybody. It is definitely an honor to be with you all on this morning and definitely looking forward to this lesson. So thank you so much, Steve. It is definitely an honor. All right. Hey, Amen. We got Karen. Karen, you, you're on time this morning. <laughs> Karen was so excited about uh, Sunday school yesterday. I sent the reminder out about seven o'clock ahead and, and I told her to remind her sister and they both thought it was yesterday. And they said, they texted me, they said, you're not on yet. We're looking for you. I said, well, that's tomorrow, Sunday. So I love when people are so excited to hear the word that they are jumping on early. So nice job with that, Karen, and your sister as well. So I'm sure, I hope she'll be joining us shortly as well. All right. So let's get our, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and put the scriptures up on the screen for everybody. So we are lesson today. We are coming from, let me get it up here for you. If you don't have your uh, Bibles, I mean, if you don't have a Sunday school book, it's okay. You got your Bibles. We're going to put it up. But we're coming from uh, Matthew's, the fourth chapter, the first through the 14th verse. And Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. So if you're looking for Matthew at the beginning of the Bible, you're not going to find them. You need to go to the second half of the Bible. Amen. So Matthew is right after Malachi. So if that helps you all, you can jump from Malachi to Matthew that lets you know that you're in the right place. All right. So and I'm going to put the scriptures on the screen and we're going to read through them and then we will go further into our lesson. So let's go ahead and do this. And let me make sure uh, everyone can see it. Let's get it in the stream here. All right. 
And it and I what I did this week was I decided to go ahead and put not only the King James version up, but I put a parallel translation. I got the New Living Translation next to it as well, because sometimes that helps us all. I don't know about you, but it helps me uh, when I have a different translation. So I am put up a different translation for you. And if you guys can see the screen, make sure you let me know. Curtis, can you see the screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and read. So Matthew 4, 1 through 14 says, then, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hunger. And when the tempter came, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Verse five and six, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And then seven and eight, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taken him up into a high and exceeding mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou will fall down and worship me. Verses 10 and 11, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Then now when Jesus had heard that John was cast in, into prison, he departed into Galilee. Verse 13, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the east coast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. And then our final verse 14, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias or Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of sea, behold, Jordan, Galilee of Gentiles. All right. So our we had our verses read today. And I'll leave that up for just a little bit and then we'll take it out. And now we want to always, so Minister Curtis, what we like to do is we we want to remind everybody what our focus verse is going to be. So our focus verse is actually going to be verses uh, uh, four, which says, and you, we, and, and you all have your Bibles at home. Why don't you get your Bibles and your tablets out so you can reference some of these scriptures? It's going to be very important today that we uh, use the reference scriptures because we're talking about how Jesus is overcoming temptation with the word. So we want to know some of these scriptures that he referred to, amen, when he was uh, warding off the devil. All right, so verses uh, four said, and he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, amen. And then finally, it's, it's time for, what time is it, you all? It's time to level up. With the level up outline, time for the level up outline, time for the level up outline. All right. So let's go and get into our level up outline is where we break it down into a few bite-sized chunks so that we can all understand it a little better. Amen. So let's go ahead and put that up there. Yes, it's time for the level up outline. So the first one is going to be preparation for temptation. That's going to cover verses one through two. And then we want to reference the book of James, uh, chapter one, verses 13. So you might want to kind of make notes of those as we're going to go to those. And then two, the process of temptation, which is going to cover verses three through 10. And we're going to reference Deuteronomy eight and three, Deuteronomy six and 13, Deuteronomy 10 and 20, Psalms 91, 11 through 12, and then Revelations 19 and 16. And then finally, uh, number three, protection after temptation, and that will cover verses 11 through 14. All right, so now, as always, Minister Curtis, uh, we like to do this. We like to let the class know what we are trying to get out of the lesson today. So to examine Matthew's version of the temptation of Jesus, 
And then why are we doing this today? To teach the word of God, to teach that the word of God is our best defense against temptation. And then how do we apply this to our daily lives? To encourage students to overcome temptation as Jesus did. Amen. All right. So there we have it. We have our level of outline and we are ready to go. Minister Curtis, are you ready to go, man? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> All right. So I uh, see we got some more people joining in. So amen. God bless you, Mother Gordon. Good to see you on this morning. Amen, Kelly. Glad to see you on this morning. <laughs> so, so happy to see that you were looking for us on yesterday because you were so excited. But I'm glad that we have you back on today, being so faithful in supporting the ministry. All of you all were so thankful for you. So we got Minister Curtis with us all the way from uh, LaGrange, Alabama slash Georgia, by, Alabama by way of Georgia, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right. So, so Curtis, anything you want to kind of open up talking about the lesson? Because we just kind of have a dialogue about anything right away that just stands out to you with the lesson. Well, what stands out to me is that when we when you sent this to me and I started reading it, you know, it kind of basically just stood out to me everyday life of how it is that, you know, we're in church and, you know, basically things will actually, you know, begin to come up against us. And we know what the word of God is as opposed to what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And the devil, basically, when it comes to temptation, what it sticks out in my mind is the temptation is nothing more than just a trick of the enemy to go ahead and to get you to basically to kind of subside to his will versus subside into the will of God. And again, what was funny is we go through this lesson is, is that how the devil tried to cast doubt. And if you look at this, he even tried to cast doubt to Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. But if you read through these verses, it's so funny that each time he always opens up with, if you be the son of God, you know he's the son of God. So again, that is essentially what basically kind of just, you know, kind of just brought out, you know, in the beginning of this. Okay. All right. So class, let's kind of talk about this a minute. So since our lesson is saying overcoming temptation uh, with the word, uh, let's break it down. So what does it mean class to overcome something and then also what does it mean by temptation because you know this is interactive class so we all learn together so when we say that somebody is overcoming something class what are we talking about many times minister curtis we've heard preachers and we probably have said it ourselves that you know touch your neighbor and say i'm an overcomer you know you know touch three people hey, say I'm overcomer overcomer hey, <laughs> You know, and we say that, but what does that mean to overcome something, class? And why it takes them a couple of minutes to type in their answers, Minister Curtis, Minister Brooks. So mm -hmm. uh, as they're getting their answers, we can go ahead and proceed. All right. So we're overcoming temptation. And I like the way that the subject line is because it's telling us something we can do. It's telling us something what we can do it to. And then it tells us something we can do it with. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So then Minister Kurt, Minister Brooks, what is temptation? Well, temptation is basically something in which basically the devil knows that it's a vulnerability of yours. It's a weakness. So that is, you know, what temptation is. If you basically, you know, you know, I love sweets. So it's like, you know, basically. You know, I sit up and I look at German chocolate cake. Now, I know that this year I'm about to turn 50 and I know I can't eat that as much as I used to <laughs> and everything like that. <laughs> so it's like my doctor telling me, now, Curtis, you need to kind of, you know, weigh up off those sweets a little bit. But you look at him like, hey, if I just eat a little piece, I might be all right. But it is definitely just a vulnerability of yours in which the devil uses to basically attack. You. All right. All right. So. Uh, Karen has said, she said, temptation. Oh, I like this, Karen. Very nicely written. Temptation is something that is enticing. Wow, that is so good that she put in enticing. Because listen, uh, Minister Brooks, do we do we believe that the devil ever tempts us with something we don't like? No, no. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> he's never going to come at you with anything that you don't like. He especially knowing that his ultimate goal is for your downfall. So he's going to basically come at you with something that he's going to have it to where it's something that you're going to find hard to resist. So no, it would never be anything that you don't like. Amen. Amen. And, and one of the things is, class, we can know this, that the devil knows, just in case you don't think, the devil knows what you like, what you could be tempted with. The devil knows the things you like and dislike. Like I always mm -hmm. tell people, as I said, there's no reason that the devil will ever bring marijuana or weed or cigarettes or, or alcohol, or anything like that to me. That's I, I, I can if I had to be in the midst of that. Nothing about that is going to make me feel like, oh, wow, I, I sure would like to have some, too. You know, maybe let me get a puff of that. Let me get a swig of that. Let me get a drink of that. He knows that's not something that affects me. So he won't bring that to me. Now, he may try, but he knows it's a futile event. So what he's going to do is he's going to bring something else to me that he knows that Pastor Steve likes. And then that's where my temptation comes in. So the devil understands all of our temptation. So and now he and he meets us at our place. You said a minister Brooks, you said vulnerable. So he meets us at our place of vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now that's going to take us right into the lesson because we're about to find out. All right. And then Karen has given us our original question when we asked what was overcoming. She said overcoming is achieving beyond challenges. Ooh, very nice. Karen is on point this morning. Amen. Achieving <laughs> beyond challenges, meaning that it doesn't matter how challenging the situation is. We continue to achieve and therefore we overcome. In other words, we never give up. We overcame that. We got past it. We got through it. It's some things in our life that happened to us that we didn't think we were ever going to get through. But Amen. some way, somehow we were able to overcome it. And the temptations, we are all going to we are all tempted. We're tempted all the time. And we're all in a position where we're going to be tried to see if we can overcome a temptation. So let's go right to our word today. Let's put the scripture back up on the screen here so we can get back into it. All right. And I don't want to uh, let us run out of time because we definitely want to give Minister Curtis plenty of time to share today. Amen. All right. So now our first scripture is talking about, it said, and Jesus is that, and then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, class, we just want to remind you all that if you were with us last week, you remember last week we talked about uh, John, Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. Amen. And then after Jesus was baptized, he was uh, at the River Jordan and John baptized him. We saw that uh, we saw that wonderful individual manifestation of the Trinity where uh, Jesus was in the water. The Holy Ghost descended down like a dove. And then the father in heaven declared, this is my beloved son. In, he, in him, I am in whom I am well pleased. So we saw that. And then after that, even that lesson ended. And that was Mark's account. So last week we dealt with Mark's account of this. And Mark began to tell us that, and Jesus was going to be led, driven to the wilderness. Mark used the word driven to the wilderness of the spirit. Matthew's account today is starting picking up right where Mark left off with his version of it. And he's saying that Jesus was being led of the spirit. Minister Brooks, I thought that when um, we were tempted or we were going into a test, that it's the devil that, that sometimes puts us, pushes us towards the test. What do we see differently about verse one today? Well, as it said in, in the first verse, is that it said, "Then Jesus, then and then was Jesus led up to." I'm sorry. Then was Jesus led up to the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So again, when you look at that, I think that what it is actually saying is is that it was the Spirit that led him to be tempted one thing to keep in mind i think is is that god controls everything mm -hmm. the devil may feel as if he controls certain things but no it's not true god controls everything and because jesus was in the flesh he came to basically endure everything it is that we go through and to show us how 
versus what the actual lesson is saying, how to actually overcome it. So as it's on the screen, it is the preparation was to say, yes, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, then, you know, here it comes as to what was then actually someone couldn't necessarily say he was predestined to actually have this to actually happen so that we could therefore look at it and say, Jesus went through exactly what it is that we went through. So, but this is just the beginning of that. Okay. All right. Very nice. All right. So uh, our level up outline is telling us that verses one and two is talking about the preparation. Listen, this, I found this interesting, Minister Brooks, that it said the preparation for temptation. Most times, I don't think in class, and you all tell us, is there anybody in the class here that that uh, prepares themselves for a temptation? Is there anybody in the class that deliberately tells themselves, I'm going to go and be tempted today? <laughs> Usually <laughs> temptation just kind of finds us, doesn't it? But we see that there's a preparation for temptation. So now that preparation was Jesus fasting uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And it said in verse 2, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. Uh, anybody in the class have ever fasted throughout your lifetime? Have you ever went on a fast? Maybe it was a, amen. Let's see. First Lady G says, God always knows how much we can take and will purposely allow temptation because there is always a way out. Amen. Very Man. good. Amen. Lady Man. G went to my, she went to my first Corinthians uh, six uh, scripture, which that is the key for us to realize that yes, the temptation will come, but with the temptation, God makes a way of escape. So thank you very much, First Lady G. That helps me with my scripture later on. So we, we don't even have to go there. So look, so now if God is purposely, and she used the word purposefully, that means it's intentional. So the spirit, Minister Brooke, it said it led him. He was led up by the spirit. And so now he fasted 40 days a night. Class, when you fast, how do you feel when you fast? Somebody, y'all just start typing in some of the different things that you feel when you're fasting. Minister Brooks, what are some of the things that you felt when you were fast? You remember we we came up and where we were uh, always we were fasting two days and nights, uh, three mm -hmm. days and nights, morning to yes. four o'clock. Uh, the whole month of January, we were fasting every day, morning to four o'clock. Yes. And we were yes. taught that when we were going through something and when we needed strength, that we were to fast. So what were some of the things, as the class is telling us some of the things that the feelings that they deal with some of the temptation they deal with while they're fasting what are some of the things you remember uh feeling when you were fasting well some of the things that i could definitely say i remember is and that i actually still continue to do that january fast every year um so but some of the things i feel is i feel thirst you know it's like you just get real thirsty you're like you know your mouth is dry you just like really really thirsty and everything but you know one of the other things is that you're definitely going to feel a hunger and without fail it always is is that you know every year you know you're fasting and then it's like okay you you're on site you know i'm hybrid so it's like i'm on site maybe two three days a week and then you're fasting and of course you don't let anybody know that you're fasting but then here comes your boss oh curtis you know i'm gonna take you out to lunch today go ahead take you out to lunch today and like mm, no, i can't go to lunch. <laughs> you really can't go to lunch today but you feel you know thirst you feel hunger you know sometimes you may feel a bit of a pain also you know your head will start hurting a little bit because you know it's like okay you know i haven't eaten you know your body is accustomed to eating at a certain time so those are just some of the things in which you begin to feel and you know what lynette uh good morning lynette lynette has some interesting uh uh a perspective on it, which i think is very smart to say she said you feel some of everything uh you know sometimes you feel happy you know, you know, mm -hmm. you have some of those days when you fast and you're like, "Ooh, I'm on. I feel like I'm spiritually on top of the world right now. And then other times you feel sad, you know, mm -hmm. and then you hungry and then you feel blessed. And other times then you feel tempted, tempted to go mm -hmm. get that water, tempted to go have a little piece of something, tempted to come off the fast before it's time to come off the fast. Amen. And look, and Mama Parks. Yes, this is this is a big one right here. 
Now, come on, saints of God, let's keep it real. We all know that when we fasted and when you're hungry, you feel you can get irritable, can't you? Amen. Sometimes you don't, you just, your, 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 your tolerance level is low, your senses like, okay, everything is kind of agitating you right now. That's why they had that commercial Snickers. They say here, you need a Snickers because you're not yourself when you're hungry, right? <laughs> you're hangry. <laughs> yeah, so you're hangry. I like that. Yeah, so you're hangry. Amen. So those are some of the things we feel when we are, and the reason we're asking that is so you all, we all can understand that Jesus was in his human side now, right? So he was going to be feeling all of these things you all just named. And so now it said he was led into the wilderness and this is the preparation. Uh, let me see. And then Karen makes it clear the goal of fasting is to get us closer to God. I'm so glad Amen. you said that, Karen, because people fast for so many different reasons. When we talk of there's certain things, a spiritual fast, and then there's there's the health fasts. You know, there's a healthy fast where they do this thing called intermittent fasting now. You know, intermittently fasting because that's a health thing. I don't see, I don't know that that's necessary anything spiritual about that. If your intent is not fasting to let your spirit man grow, but intermittent fasting is a healthy thing. It helps you lose weight. It helps you get more into shape. But then when we talk about fasting, as the Bible talks about fasting, we're talking about fasting, like Karen said, as a way to get closer to God. That becomes yeah. our ultimate goal. And in our lesson today, the spirit is leading Jesus uh, to be fasted so he can prepare for what, Minister Brooks? So he can prepare to be tempted by the devil. Mm, mm. <laughs> Look, purposely driven to be tempted by the devil. All right. So then mm. let's go into our uh, let's go into our scripture. All right. So now it says here. And I'm getting that right here. All right, so now he was he went into the wilderness. Minister Brooks, what was significant? Why did he have to go into the wilderness? Couldn't he have just fasted where he was? Couldn't he have just fasted at home like many of us do? You know, why did he it was specific that he was sent to the wilderness? Well, I think that he was sent to the wilderness because it was a dry and it was just basically a desolate take a place. To where there's nothing and no one yet around him and when you're in the wilderness that is basically you have no one else to depend on but god so i think that basically he was sent to the wilderness to basically be put into the place as to how you know you can even look at um look back into the book of genesis uh, i believe to where it said you know the lord led you know let the children of israel into the wilderness and it could therefore be stated there that it is that he led them to the wilderness to be tested, to necessarily see would they follow the word that he had already given. So I think that basically that's why Jesus had to be led to the wilderness, because it was actually the same place that the children of Israel were led to. Your sound. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, 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 uh. All right. While he gets that together, we'll uh cont all right, there you go. All right, so that was very good, Curtis, that you brought that up because uh G God had led the children into Israel of Israel. He out of Egypt, then he sent them into the wilderness, like you said, to see if they would be obedient. So class, what do we think God's ultimate desire from his people are? If he sent the children into the wilderness to be, uh, the children of Israel into the wilderness to see if they would obey him, he's sending Jesus into the wilderness for the same thing. So what do we think it's telling us that God's ultimate desire is that his people will be? Come on, my uh, Bible people, y'all good. Uh, can y'all? Uh, she says we can't hear. Can y'all hear me now? Can you hear me, Curtis? Yeah, we can hear you now. I, at can least I can, can hear, hear you me now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. She was saying we can't hear you. All right. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, uh, so he wanted to do the same thing. So, in order to prepare them, 
All right. Thank you, Elena. All right. So in order to uh, thank you, wife. All right. I think when I switched over to the camera, I lost my audio, so I probably won't do that. All right. So to prepare them for uh, the new the, the, uh, the testing, he says, I want to see if you will be obedient. God's ultimate desire is that his children be obedient to him. Amen. 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 So uh, Minister Brooks, it says here that he and when the, and so he was after 40 days and nights, he was hungered. Just like any of us, whatever amount of time we fast, after we have fasted, we are hungry. Why are we fast and we hungry? <laughs> and look like the closer you get <laughs> towards the end of the fast, the more hungry you get. All right. So and now the tempter came. Class, who was the tempter? I want you all to answer this. So it had this 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 entity being has many different names. And now we're hearing another one of the names that he's given. So when it said, and the tempter came, class, who are we talking about? And then Minister Brooks will keep going while they answer that. And so it said, and the tempter came to him, and he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. All right. So now the tempter, amen. There you go, first lady, the evil devil. That's right, Karen, the devil. That's right. Look, I know that seems like that's kind of a elementary question to ask, but we just want to make it clear that when you hear these different names that, you know, because sometimes Minister Brooks, people think God tempts them. Is that is that a true saying, Minister Brooks? Does God ever tempt anybody? No, no. The Lord, the Lord never, ever tempts you. And actually, because I have that scripture. I have that scripture in my notes. I believe it is. Hold on one second here. Uh, I can't find it right now, though, but I know I did put that scripture actually in my notes to where it does say that basically let no man. Oh, it's James 1 and 13. Let no mm -hmm. man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted with any man. So James 1 and 13 tells you God will never tempt you. So no. Mm, all right. Good. Thank you, man. You are on point, minister. And that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted because we want to make the distinction that the tempter is the devil, like the class has told us. And he is the one that brings temptation. Now, God can use him and use the temptation that he will bring to us to bring about his will. Is that correct? Amen. All right. So class, we see today now that God is uh, allowing the tempter to come and the tempter came and he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. All right. So now class. So right now, Minister Brooks, why is he bringing this particular temptation to Jesus at this moment? Well, I feel that he's bringing this particular temptation to Jesus is because of the fact that whereas he had just fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the first thing that he wants to obviously bring to him is, is basically, you know, obviously Jesus is hungry. So he wants to bring, you know, hunger to Jesus and basically say, OK, well, you know, to fulfill basically your natural this is what I want to first begin to tempt you with. You haven't eaten anything or drank anything in 40 days or 40 nights. You be the son of God. Turn these stones to bread so that your stomach could get be, you know, it could be filled. Now that's me adding on to that part, but I think <laughs> that's what <laughs> I think yeah, that's I like what you probably brought it over to him. <laughs> okay, I like that. So now how about this class? Notice how he said, if thou be the son of God. So, class, let me ask you all this. Do you all think the devil had any doubt in his mind that Jesus was, in fact, the son of God? So when he said, well, if you be the son of God, was he saying that because he needed to be convinced that he was the son of God? Why do you all think, class, he started out by saying, if thou be the son of God? And as you all are doing that, I'm going to go ahead and continue. All right. And then it said here, uh, verses four and five. Jesus gives a response. He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All right. So yeah. Jesus, we find that Jesus has his first temptation 
of the devil. He is being presented with, Minister Brooks, you said it with the natural temptation. All right, we got an answer from the class. Let's see what the class is saying. All right, so Elena says, no, he knew he was just trying to play mind games. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and look, how many know Elena? Exactly. Listen, don't the devil try to play mind games with us? He tried to play mind games with Adam and Eve in the garden, didn't he? Yes, he did. You know, insinuating things, twisting things a little bit. All right. And Lynette says these were words of temptation and ma temptation manipulation. Yeah, exactly. He was trying to manipulate Jesus in this situation, said, now, if you be the son of God. All right. And uh, First Lady said, exactly, Elena. And Jesus didn't even address that. All right. Amen. Mother Gordon said. And the devil was challenging Jesus. All right. So now these are all excellent answers. So this is what was happening to him. So people of God understand this. Minister Brooks, if we can expect that to happen to Jesus when he fasts, what should we expect what should happen after we come out? We fast. Amen. And the very same thing. Again, it goes to uh again, you're basically trying to as someone said you're basically trying to align to become one with god and to come closer with god so the devil is going to therefore tempt you with what he knows it's going to necessarily try to have your ultimate downfall you know it's it's like one of those things i remember years ago pastor reed used to say you know whatever's in you is going to come out you know if you hit your hand with a hammer you know, obviously, whatever is inside of you, go come out. You go say, "Oh Jesus," or "Oh whatever else." But the thing is, is that that's his major goal is to basically play, as Elena said, mind games. He wants to put that seed of doubt in your head. He knew that Jesus was the Son of God, and as uh, Lady G said, Jesus didn't even acknowledge it because he knew who he was already. So definitely that's what the devil is going to throw. All right. And Elena saying here is going to happen to us uh, as well. However, if Jesus can overcome it, we can too. You don't have to prove nothing to the devil. And by Amen. first lady saying that he didn't even address that was basically saying, look, I don't have to prove nothing to you. I know who I am. And, and, and Satan knew exactly who Jesus was. But what he was trying to reference was uh, last week's lesson when the voice of uh, from when God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Basically, Man. Satan was taking those same words and said, OK, so your father said you the son of God. So now if you really the son of God, like, you know, and I know you are, but now since you the son of God, you got some power. He was really just trying Man. to say, OK, since you the son of God, we know that uh, start performing some of those things son of God can the son of God can do. So he said, all right, this is what you do. He said, turn these stones to bread. If you, you since you, and so in other words, he wasn't, if we rephrase it, we won't say if you are the son of God, really we can say, he was saying, since you are the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. So he thought Jesus was going to be so hungry that he was going to disobey his father by getting some food and that's what the devil does he comes to us with first natural then spiritual right so now jesus now, so minister brooks did jesus have the power to turn those stones into bread if he wanted to oh yeah, yeah god he has all power yeah. so he had the power to do it but as you said it was about being obedient to the will of god amen so and and like First Lady said, he didn't even address that. So he just went on and he countered it with what he's trying to teach us to do. He said, it is written. I love how he's going to keep saying that it is written, which means it's written down somewhere for us to access that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he was letting the devil know, listen, food is not is only a natural need. And yes, it's an important need, but in the in the greater scheme of being obedient and fulfilling God's will, Jesus knew he could get food anytime. That was not going to be a woman. Listen, when we on our fast, we think, you know, we know it's food all around. As you said earlier, Minister Bruce, they're going to bring your food at work. They're going to bring your food at school. Everybody going to want to mm -hmm. take you out for lunch. It's no shortage of getting the food, but that's the point of where the obedience comes in that is that because it's there, I don't have to take it. 
So Jesus knew, look, I don't have to worry about food. If I want some bread, I can get it. So and that's what the devil said. Well, man, you know you can do that. Go ahead and turn. So Jesus said, no. The important thing is that I we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So that means that for us Christians, our spiritual uh, wellness is based on how much of the word of God that we put in, that we speak out of our mouth versus how much food we put inside our mouth. Amen. Amen. All right, and let's see. Elena says here, he had the power to do it and he had the power to make the devil leave. But this was a teaching moment for us. If Jesus can overcome, we can too, because the spirit is supposed to live us as believers. Exactly. That's right. And Karen, amen is that too. Exactly. Right, Elena. It was a teaching moment because Minister Brooks, what do you think would have happened if he would have, in fact, turned those stones into bread and ate? How would that have affected us? Well, I think how it would have affected us is, is that we would have basically not, you know, we would have basically not been able to um, overcome the things it is that we actually overcome by basically showing this. If Jesus would have done that, it would have been a blatant form of disobedience. I believe it is the scripture in the Bible that says, you know, to the effect of by the, you know, that it was one that basically caused many to fall, but it's also going to be one that is going to cause a many to necessarily come to Christ. Mm -hmm. However, I think that if he would have actually did that, then it would have basically put us right back into, as you said before, like Adam and what happened to Adam and Eve, he would have succumbed to the, uh, to the manipulation of the devil. And then we wouldn't necessarily be as strong as we are today based off of that because the son of god failed but thank god that he did amen thank god that he didn't as we go through this easter season we're going to see all the many things that uh jesus will be tempted with that will ultimately that will he, be, he will be tempted to be obedient or disobedient that if he would succumb to, to any of them it would have cost us our soul malena says we would constantly try we would constantly try to prove ourselves to the devil, giving him power. We don't have to prove nothing. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. Amen. Amen. The word of God is what we speak. So now Jesus overcame that with that first scripture. So now let's go to five. Let's go through five through eight. He's just saying, said, okay, that didn't work. I got something else for you. So Minister Brooks, uh, it said, then the devil taking him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said, "If uh, once again, if thou be the son of God, or since you are the son of God, then cast yourself off of this pinnacle. Now, what pinnacle in Holy City was he talking about, Minister Brooks? In class, if you all know that answer, you can answer too. Wait, I'm sorry, say it one more time, I'm sorry. So when he said he took him up onto the top of the pinnacle of the Holy City, what was the Holy City that he's talking about? Well, he took him up to the top, basically, he took him up to the heavens to necessarily look down upon what well, I think, and I could be wrong with this, but it's just my interpretation of it is, is that he took him up to the, basically up to the heavens as of that point to look down, therefore, of the earth and what God had created. So I'm pretty sure you could correct me on that, but that's what my well, interpretation you know, All right, so then we, we can do that. So now when you talk about the pinnacle in the holy city, uh, he mm -hmm. was referring to Jerusalem. Okay. Right now they were in Galilee, which was a province of Jerusalem. And, mm -hmm. I, and that, so in the holy city, Jerusalem, which the Bible will always talk about that view, that holy city, one of these days. All right. The mm -hmm. new Jerusalem. So at the pinnacle is usually when you look at some of those churches and they got one of them tall, tall uh, stems, if you want, or a little peak. The, the particular one in Jerusalem was about 450 feet above ground, which means that if you went up there, you could see across the entire valley. You could see across all the nations. So the devil took him up there, led him up there and said, now, listen, if you since you say you are the son of God, do it not the Bible say. And uh, he said, now, leap, jump off the cliff. How many know the devil will take you up to a pinnacle and try to test you and tell you to jump off the cliff? Sometimes when you in your weakest point, in your weakest moment, he will tell you to jump off a cliff. And then he's telling Jesus, well, you don't have to worry because 
Psalms 91 and 11, 12. Let me put that up there for the class. So we can see the scriptures that the devil, look, the devil knows the Bible, y'all. Now he don't quote it the way it's supposed to be quoted, but he knows it too, amen. So, and it's important for us to know the Bible because there's a lot of people out there that know how to twist and turn turn and spin the word and for how they want it to be understood, not the context for which it was meant written. So Psalms 91, 11, 12 says, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways that they, they shall bear thee up with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So he's using this scripture in Psalms 91 that Moses, that God gave Moses a right to the children of Israel. That scripture, Minister Brooks was just talking about how God would deliver his people if they happen to fall into difficult situations. Not that they deliberately went out there and put themselves in harm's way, but as we're in this Christian life, we sometimes may fall into difficult situations, but God was letting them know, I will be there to bear you up. So the devil took that scripture and twisted it. Isn't that something? Yes, he did. Like yes, Jesus did. was so dumb, he didn't know what that scripture meant. Like he wasn't there when the scripture was written. <laughs> so he was <laughs> using that saying, well, do it not the Bible say? And so then what answer did he give? What answer did Jesus uh give Minister Brooks to that one? Oh, let's see here. And devil taking him up into the holy city and set at him so go ahead, on go a pinnacle. Go verse seven. Okay. And he saith unto him, if thou be the son of God. Okay, so I'm sorry. So it said, Jesus said unto him, and it's written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. So that was the answer that, that he actually ended up giving to him. And again, it's kind of funny, based off of what it was that you said, how the devil actually does things is, is that he twisted Psalms 91, 11, and 12 because he didn't put everything into it. He right. basically left a part out of it where it says, and should keep you in all your ways. He didn't put that part in there. He no, just basically no. said, oh, if, you, put, if you be the son of God, you know, the angels will surely come get you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now verse seven, and you explained this earlier when you was talking about God doesn't tempt anybody. So Jesus was yet quoting the Bible again because uh, he told them, and this was in Deuteronomy uh uh, I think it was 10 and 20, he's letting them know that you don't tempt the Lord that God. Uh, Pastor uh, Bishop Green is saying some same tactics Satan used in the garden. The exact right, Bishop, the same tactics. Do, when he said to Eve, he said, did he really mean? Did he really say that? And so mm -hmm. and he, he said in a way to make you second guess what you already know. Listen, class, don't let the devil make you second guess what you've been taught. Don't let Man. the devil say, make you second guess because you're in your moment of weakness, because you're in your moment of despair and you're having to overcome. Don't let him bring a scripture in that you know what it means. And then he twists it and say, well, did it really mean that Eve? And Eve got mm -hmm. to think like, well, maybe it didn't mean that. And therefore he tricked her. He, she was beguiled, deceived, and she fell. Amen. So now Man. he was, uh, said here, it is written again. Listen, class, every time the devil is attacking him, the lesson tells us overcoming temptation with the word, not overcoming temptation with what we think, not overcoming temptation of our strength, but is with the word of God. Amen. So he said, Man. you should not tempt the Lord thy God. And then, and because uh, Minister Brooks, back when the children of Israel was in the wilderness, they tried to tempt God. They tried to tell God to do some stuff to prove mm -hmm. he was God. And God got angry with them, didn't he? And yes, he, he, did. he got. He said, listen, he said, you don't, back there, I think it was in Mass, it was called M-A-S-S-A-H, back in Massah. They tried to tempt the Lord, say, well, if you God and you can do all this for us, do this, do that. God said, wait a minute, I don't have to prove nothing to you. Listen, Minister Brooks, should we should we be serving God because he can do stuff for us or should we serve him because of who he is? We should always serve God for who he is because there are always those unexpected and unknown things which actually occur that God protects us from. Even when we're not right, 
the plan of God is always that he has for us is always right for us. So we should always serve God for who he is versus as to what it is that he can necessarily give to us. If you just want to, it's kind of like basically being in a marriage. Are you going to necessarily marry somebody basically for the money that they have? But what happens if that money leaves? Mm-hmm. And they are basically, you know, down and everything of that nature. Are you going to then therefore walk away? Or are you going to stick with them because of the person in which they are? And they showed you that they would keep the covenant that you all uh, established when, on the day that you got married. So, again, yes, be serve God for who he is, not versus who for what he can do for you. Amen. I like and I like that marital analogy you threw in there too. Very nice. That would that have been great last month and I love month. Amen. <laughs> Amen. With a couple of minutes, a few minutes we got left. So yeah, so God got angry with them because the children of Israel were trying to make him prove that he was God. God had done a thousand things for the children of Israel already <laughs> that should have proved to them he was God, but they kept wanting to be proven again. So we're not to be tempting God to say, God, do this. Something when we pray, well, God, if you God. You will do this for me. God, if you're supposed to be my savior, my Lord, you will perform this miracle for me. God don't have to do nothing. He don't have to do nothing, we ask. Amen. And we and he still deserves for us to serve him. Amen. Amen. So now we go into, and then number eight, it said, and, and again, the devil takes him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou will fall down and worship me. Listen, where we are, class. So now we are at the third temptation. The first one was the food. The second one was to throw himself over the uh, um, ch- the, temp- the pinnacle of the, the temple in Jerusalem. And the third one now is, if you are the son of man, he said, then listen, bow down and worship me and I will give you all of this. What is so class? What is so weird about that? Come on. this I need some more class for participation. Y'all been doing good. What is so uniquely wrong about what Satan was trying to offer Jesus? Let me see if we can pull it out of y'all. Minister Brooks, you think we can pull it out of him this morning? Yes, definitely. Uh, Definitely yeah. pull it out of them. All right, so don't, I don't, I don't want I, we, me and you're not going to answer. We're going to let them answer. But you all think about yeah. that. This is Satan taking Jesus up into a high mountain. In other words, basically looking over all the earth and saying all the kingdoms, all the wealth, all the glory, all the power, I will give you if you would just <laughs> bow down and worship me. Interesting. So why y'all? So what was uniquely wrong about that uh, temptation? Why it wasn't designed to work in the first place? I'm gonna put it that way. Now, see, <laughs> we have to be careful. We have to be careful with that because the devil comes with us like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll, he'll try to show us all of this stuff. You know, show us all of the glory. Show us all of the stuff we can get Man. if we would bow down and worship him. And Amen. he said he's going to use the same tactic with Jesus, but Jesus gives him another answer, does it? Come on, class, where y'all at this morning? What was wrong with that statement that uh, Satan made to Jesus? He said, if you, I'm a, I'm a, I'll give you all of this. I want to tell y'all, I know y'all know it. All right, so give you a couple <laughs> more seconds. All right, and then uh, Minister Brooks, what did verse 10 say? Read that for us. Sure. Verse 10 said, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. All right. So now again, he goes to the scripture again. Are we getting this? Are we are we seeing the pattern? Are we seeing the the, the example Elena said that Jesus was trying to teach us? All right. Here come Lady G. All right. She says here, because listen. Do y'all see the scripture here? Because the earth is the Lord and and the fullness thereof. (laughs) God created the heavens and the earth from nothing. So he can't give us nothing but misery and a hard life. Amen. Listen to that first part. And he said, because the earth is already the Lord's. All right. The answers are coming in. Karen says he wanted Jesus to think he was the provider. Y'all see that? That Mm -hmm. he was. 
Jehovah Jireh, all right? And then Elena says, it doesn't make sense because it's already God's. He's the creator. Why would Jesus bow down to a creation? Y'all hear that? All oh, those three Amen. answers. Y'all, look, y'all, I love all three of those answers there. So listen, <laughs> in other words, Jesus was basically saying that, how are you going to offer me something that I already own? Amen. First lady said, the earth is the Lord's. It didn't say it was Satan's. So Satan couldn't, Satan couldn't give something that he didn't own. Amen. So that's why we have to be careful when the devil is trying to tell us what he'll give us or what he won't give us. We have to remember, first of all, you don't own anything. You don't have the power to give or not give, really. Everything on this earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. And I got a scripture that I want to use, too, in Revelations so that we all can know that we're getting our Bible references, too. So, Minister Brooke Curtis, why don't you read that scripture for me on the screen? And he had in his vesture and on his high uh, and on his high, Five. I'm sorry, he had on his high a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right. So in Revelation 19 and 16, when Jesus is coming back to receive the church and, and, and for us to fight the battle of Armageddon and to do away with Satan, it said the the, the clothes that he had on, the uniform he had on in his, if you opened up his vest, it's like Superman. You open up Superman's vest and it's a big old S there, right? <laughs> he said and in his vest, he opened up, there was a name and not only was it on his chest, but it was on his thigh. And it was, it was a name that said he was King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So it had Man. already been determined that Jesus was going to own everything, that he was going to be the king of all kings. Amen. Erica says Satan was trying to take credit, amen, for what God had already did. Y'all on point this morning. All right. And then the other thing is, before we uh, close it out, Minister Brooke, what was Satan ultimately really trying to stop Jesus from doing? Let's just kind of go forward. What was he really trying to stop Jesus from doing? Ultimately, what he was really trying to stop Jesus was, uh, from doing was to basically fulfill the will of God, which, which he was. had been sent for. I mean, if you could go back to, I got a scripture from the book of John, uh, the fourth chapter and verses 31 through 34. And it says, in the meantime, while his disciples prayed, him saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have need to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, had any man bought him, ought to eat. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That will go ahead, I think is the best answer to your question right there is that he was trying to stop God from doing what the will of God, trying to stop Jesus from doing what the will of God was trying to put a stop into his finished work. All right. So now let's, let's, let's flesh it out a little bit more. So let's just, so then what was the will of God? What was the will? Of, what was his assignment? Jesus' assignment was, was to basically come and to necessarily show us that in the flesh, we're that if he can necessarily overcome things, we should be able to overcome all things through God and what's the as to what God had necessarily already pre-stated. So Jesus is the ultimate work was is for Jesus to come and to show us that it can be done. It's not that God is saying something in which you cannot do. You can survive these tests, you can survive these trials. But right. you can do them based upon what the Lord has already actually told you. And then look at what First Lady got on the screen there, Minister Brooks. All right. He was trying to stop Jesus from getting to the cross. Amen. Ultimately, that was his ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. He said, look, if I can get, I can, he wanted to give Jesus all of these promises to skirt the cross. See, here's what we have to be careful of, class. The devil will try to show you the glory, but he won't show you the story that you have to do to get there. He Amen. Was trying to, say, he was trying to get Jesus to go around the assignment. He said, I'm going to let you get all the stuff you want, but I want you to do it by not obeying your father. 
And the only way Jesus was going to be fully obedient to his father was, as the Bible says, he was obedient even unto the death of the cross. Amen. That was the, all of his acts of obedience was great. But the ultimate act of obedience was that when he was told he was given to go to that cross to die for the sins of us. That's what the devil, because he knew that when Jesus did that, that was the beginning of his end. So he Man. said, if I can show you, look, if I can show you how to get, Jesus was going to get all the kingdoms anyway. He was going to hit the world anyway, but he couldn't get that until he was fulfilled his assignment. And this is a lesson for all of us. Sometimes we want to get all the good stuff God has for us, but we want to get it without fulfilling the assignment. We can't go around the cross. We all have a cross to bear, don't we? Amen. And sometimes that, and everybody's cross is different. First lady is saying, and he will try to stop us from reaching our destiny. Oh, I love that so much. Amen. Yes, or assignments if we let him. That's right. He wants to stop us from reaching our cross. Each of you in class today, you have a destiny. You have an assignment. I walked, I, I, I walked and obeyed, and I'm walking in my assignment. Minister Brooks heard and obeyed. And now he's walking in his assignment. Many of you on the uh, in class are you have found out what your assignment and your destiny was, and you are walking in it. Some of you may not have found out yet. Therefore, you're not walking in it yet. And the devil wants to keep you distracted, keep you focusing on everything else, give you everything else but what you need to have to get to your cross. Amen. That's right, Ken. Salvation. Listen, that he wanted to stop salvation from coming. Amen. So then finally, so that last one, it said, and then verse 10, he uh, reminded him again. He said, then said unto him, Satan, for it is written, it is written. Thou shalt worship the God, and him alone shalt thou worship. And we have a uh, scripture for that, too, because we want to make sure that we are keeping with our scripture references. Let me see if I have it up here. All right. So you all see that there? In Deuteronomy 6 and 13 and 10 and 20, he said, Thou shalt fear the Lord, uh, the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. 10 and 20 says, Thus, shall, thus thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve only. So that's when, when Jesus said, it is written. I just wanted us to make sure that you all knew where was these scriptures that, that Jesus was quoting. Amen. So Man. you know he was fulfilling the scriptures and he was using the word. So he reminded him, listen, God said, and we know one of the first commandments is, thou shall have no other God before me. Thou shall not worship no other God before me. So Jesus reminded him, saying, listen, you know, you know this Bible because you're quoting it back to me. So you already know it says that I can't worship nobody but God. So that's Man. the response. Jesus gave the proper responses. And uh, Minister Brooks, let's close it out and then do 11. And what happened in verse 11? Read that, Minister Brooks. Sure. Verse 11, it says, then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So now... And what does that mean to you real quickly in about 20 seconds? Well, what that means is, is that he had passed the test and he had fulfilled what the mission was. And then, you know, basically the Lord then sent angels to go ahead and to minister unto him because he had successfully completed his mission. Mm, so and then it's, I like the part that said, and then the devil left. Amen. That lets us know, resist, the Bible says in James, resist the devil, the devil. and he will flee. Please. Jesus told us, Satan, get thee behind. In mm -hmm. other words, that tells us, people of God, we have power, right? That if Amen. we to the, listen, I don't, the word of God gives me my power, not my strength, not my last name, not my position, not my credentials. Because even the most saintly people, even the most holy living people are subject to fall. We all are subject to fall and we are all subject to give in to temptation. So we cannot Man. say that because we are so holy that, you know, if we have we all we, if we have the Holy Ghost, we have to listen to the Holy If we push past the Holy Ghost, we'll give in to the temptation. So of our own strength and flesh, we cannot resist temptation. But after Man. we have resisted it, it said, and then he leaves. And then it said, and the angels came and ministered to him, which probably meant the angels brought him food. Listen to this. Uh, 
Oh, I wanted to say Erica had some. She said Matthew 17 to 20 is a verse that I keep close in helping me with temptation. Just having faith as a grain of a mustard seed so that nothing is impossible fulfill my assignment. Amen. Man. There you go. Faith is death. Faith in God, faith in his word is a way we can resist temptation. Matter of fact, the fact that we believe his word says that that's why we're quoting it and using it. So that is excellent, Erica. That's a good one. Y'all might want to adopt that too. We all can because we have assignments. Amen. So faith in what God said, that his, the power of his word is what the devil fears. The devil don't care about us. He, he, that, he that, that, that stops him is the power of God. Amen. So then it said, and the angels came and ministered to him. They brought him food and they probably brought, and they brought him company. Amen. You know, he was in the wilderness by himself for 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry, Man. he was lonely. You know, sometimes even when you get that food, sometimes you just want somebody around you. Man. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you need that emotional contact that, you know, some of you all, like my wife, you know, a lot of you all were working home throughout the entire pandemic, you know not really seeing the normal people you would see all the time. You just kind of saw your family. You just kind of saw the insides of your house or the moment time that you went out to the store or whatever. But if you were used to working inside an office or somewhere and now you don't have that regular human contact, you know, you can feel a little lonely. You can start to feel a little set aside, set aside a little cut off from the world. So and then to have the opportunity to go back and see your co-workers again, go back and see your church members. You can fellowship with your church members again. Amen. It feels good. That gives Amen. you strength, just like the food does. So Jesus, his posse showed up. And look, look, they <laughs> uh, they had an Uber and they showed up <laughs> and they brought him the angels with his door dash and they brought him some food. Amen. And so Amen. they talked to him. And then finally it says, verses 12 to 14. Now with Jesus had heard that John the Baptist was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came to dwell in Capernaum, which upon the sea was the borders of Zebulon and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. This is the last point, and we're done, because I know we went over a little bit. But Minister Brooks, it was important for Jesus, he made Capernaum his headquarters, because John was in the city of Judea. That's where mm -hmm. most of the preachers were expected to preach. And I'm going to tell y'all what I got out of this. This is what Pastor Steve got out of this. Y'all ready for Y'all ready? Jesus did not choose the regular place everybody else would be preaching the gospel. Amen. He went to Capernaum outside the city where probably nobody was preaching the gospel. Amen. In other words, just like John did, John was... Uh, in the wilderness preaching, I, and my first lady said John was the first street preacher, the straight first preach street minister. <laughs> I said Good John man. was. The, I said John was the first virtual preacher. He was the first online preacher. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't go to where everybody normally goes to to preach. He went to. He made Capernaum his headquarters. And man. listen, it's important that reason why they said headquarters mean all Jesus intended Capernaum to do was the place for them to meet up strategize, get energized, hear the word, and then take it to the streets. That's what, listen, our ministry, GWC Ministries, we're in search of, we're, we're in the process of getting a headquarters. Y'all, we can, you can call the church, you can call it, but we're calling it the headquarters, which means Man. that that's where we're just going to meet up, strategize, energize, get a word, so we can take it out into the community. That's what Jesus did. Y'all did not see Jesus sitting inside a building all the time. His Man. ministry was outside in the community, but he knew how to, he had a place to go to, to get together headquarters. So that's what we got to start looking at our churches as headquarters. The work is not in the church. The work is outside the church. And that's Man. why online ministry for us has been so important because we're trying to get the gospel to the world. Amen. Amen. We can reach more people that way along with having in-person service. Amen. And so Amen. that's why Jesus, I wanted to bring it out. That's why he chose Capernaum instead of going into the city where everybody else was. It kind of reminds me of when you go to the Holy Convocation, you got everybody inside the convocation, but then you go outside down the street and you got some preachers on the street and they preach and you're like, why you ain't the convocation? They like, well, that's what everybody he said. I'm out here trying to reach souls. 
So that's what Jesus was. Jesus said, all y'all going through convocation. I'm out here trying to reach the law some at any cost. Amen. Amen. All right. So with that being said, Minister Curtis, we're going to let you have the last any closing remarks as we dismiss. And as class, as we know, we love for you all to please bless with you. Let's raise our Sunday school offering at this time. Amen. Our Sunday school offering. Uh, some of you have been gracious to send yours this morning. Amen. Uh, 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 Erica sent hers first thing this morning. Minister Brooks uh, sent his this morning already before class started. So let's go ahead and give our Sunday school offering. We're asking for at least $10 from everybody today so we can continue doing what we're doing. So as Minister Brooks is uh, closing us out with the final remarks, you all can cash apples, give LaFi Zell. And if the Lord speaks to your heart and says, give you more than 10, listen, just oh, look, the lesson is about being obedient. If the spirit Damn. is leading you to give more, don't res don't resist that temptation. Give in to that one. Amen. Let the spirit is leading you be obedient. Amen. And give what the spirit is telling you to give. And he tells us all to give. So go ahead, Minister Curtis, and close us out. Amen. It is definitely, again, been an honor, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to come on and to join you. It definitely has been an honor and a privilege. I just want to say definitely to the uh to the class definitely i would have you all to just close out with this is is to learn from this lesson is to basically place the will of god above your physical needs that's what jesus actually did and if we were to go ahead and to do that on a daily basis we understand it's not an easy thing to do however once we do it the word of god says what he promised that he would do exceedingly and abundantly above all in which it is that we asked him to do. So I just wanted to basically close out with that. Thank Amen. you, sir. Come on, class. Let's let's thank Minister Brooks for being with us today. Come on, let's put in the comments. Let's show him some love and appreciation. And Kelly, yes, God bless you, Kelly. I did see your offering coming through. Amen, Karen. And I'm looking for you as well. I thank you all so much uh, that the offerings are coming through. Amen. Amen. Yes, this is how we keep our thing. This is how we keep it going. Amen. That's right. Minister Brooks, they're saying thank you. They're saying good job. They're letting you know that they appreciate you. And listen, uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, and we asking you all to come back at 11 o'clock. If you don't have the service of your own, come back for the 11 o'clock Word Works broadcast. We've got another empowering word for you at 11 o'clock if you don't have service. If not, then we will see you next Sunday at 9 a.m. for another wonderful, exciting Sunday School 2.0 where you can level up your Bible game in the Word. Minister Brooks, excellent job. God bless you, sir. Thank you for to you know for coming all the way from uh, uh, Georgia and Alabama by way of StreamYard. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sister Dallesta, one of our faithful uh class um, online uh sunday school members are saying great job listen y'all may not notice but gwc is the land of opportunity i want i want to give everybody a chance i don't care what church you go to and if you don't have to be a, i'm not trying to pull members i'm not trying to do any of that i just want to give everybody that has a desire to do a work for the lord if you have an assignment you have a, a destiny and you're not it's not being fulfilled listen you can come here and you, we, we will give you an opportunity to walk in your calling, to walk in your destiny, because Jesus is on his way back. And if we're not walking in our destiny, we're not pleasing God. I'm just going to leave it at that. If we're not doing what God called us to do, then we're not pleasing God. So GWC is the land of opportunity. If you want to become a member of our ministry, you're welcome to uh, contact us so we can get your information. And you don't have to live here. You can live wherever you live in, your, in the country and be a full-fledged e-member participating in all of our services. Amen. So with that being said, God bless you, everyone. And we see you uh, next week. And we hope you all have a great Sunday. God bless you, Minister Brooks. Thank you so much. We enjoyed you, sir. Enjoyed you all as well. Thank you. Thank you.